Hey guys, Desolate Magic here. We've got some controversies coming out of the Pro Tour. Who would have thought? There were two instances of rules not being followed. Um, both appeared to be due to card complexity and board state complexity. However, the judges and the players should have caught it. Now, when the opposing player doesn't catch it, then you know, why was anybody else supposed to catch it? However, people are saying, well, the judges should have caught it. Why do they even have judges? So, in both cases, was it on purpose or was it not? I don't think we have anywhere near enough information to make a determination. And we'll circle back to that at the end when I tell you what's going on. So, first up, we got the one that WotC is uh, publicly putting out a statement on magic.gg, which is like the competitive magic website. So, we've got uh, their statement in round 13 of Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3. Player Bart Van Etten was paired against Javier Dominguez for a feature match. In turn 3 of game 3, Dominguez played Flay. Titan of Fire's Fury to deal three damage to Van Etten's Nethergoyf. So, uh, totally not Tarbagoyf was a 2 3 creature at the time because two card types were in the graveyard. In response, Van Etten played Not Dead After All. Take note of the fact that that was an instant spell. So, it was targeting Nethergoyf, uh, and so he tapped it, put a Wicked Roll token on it, indicating that Nethergoyf had died, and returned to the battlefield tapped by that spell. However, Not Dead After All was in the graveyard as the third card type, so Nethergoyf would have been a 3-4 at the time when Flage's ability would have hit it. Therefore, it, it would not have died, it shouldn't have been tapped, and it shouldn't have received a Wicked Roll. So uh, the issue was raised by judge staff during round 14, and the head judges for the event investigated by reviewing footage and interviewing both players following their round 14 matches. The determination of this investigation was Van Etten had intentionally committed a game rule violation. As a result, he was disqualified from the event. That is shocking. They must have done some CSI Miami crap, or they just realized that Van Etten is a known perpetual cheater. So if you go to Google and type in Van Etten cheating, the second result under the videos section will be the ultimate database of pro players getting caught cheating, the Desolator Magic channel, <laughs> in which I titled a video, Bart Van Etten cheats at MTG, comes back, wins $20,000, and everyone is angry. I published a video about a year ago, and here he is again. So I think they're just like, hey, did you cheat? And he just says no. And they're like, yeah, but it's you. And then disqualified him. If anyone has some additional information on what went down during that interview and what evidence came up, I need to know it. I don't just want to know it. I need. I have a mighty, mighty need to know how that went down. I have a fever, and the only prescription is either more cowbell or finding out how he got DQ'd, how that evidence came up. I will say that they, they have, you know, a quick little, oh, hey, there was a, you know, disqualification at the PT. Let's discuss it on Reddit. Number one comment, serial cheater Bart Van Etten caught cheating again. 142 updutes. That comment got updated so hard, the author probably could go rescue the astronauts at the space station right now. They got stranded there <laughs> because of a Boeing aircraft. Hmm. Should have paid for the first class seats. So we do have a statement by Bart Van Etten on Le Twitter, which I will never call X. And he says, and I quote, I did not cheat. Well, now that you put it that way, I take back, just kidding. Okay, so he said, I did not cheat, comma, I just played it really sloppy and got punished for that. Even my opponent put in his statement that he taught I did not cheat. Both eyes, lowercase. Despite putting a comma after cheat, which actually, that's a full sentence. That actually should be a period. Anyway, the whole tweet's a train wreck, but his opponent taught he did not cheat. I think legitimately they just DQ'd him because of his reputation. The judges are like, this guy's still allowed to play? You know what? We think he did cheat. F*** my f Take it to Judge Judy, okay? Maybe she gives a shit. So people are dogpiling on him. Um, if you run a goif, you should know how it works because Tarmogoyf is a lot older than that card. He's a serial cheater. But is that something I would have missed? Probably. Is the complexity level of magic way too high for humans to track? It's borderline. These are pros, though, not people just casually playing at FNM and trying to figure out what the hell's going on with all this passive crap. And that wasn't a particularly um, complex board state. So do I think he cheated? Yeah, I put it at 70-30 as far as percentages. 
So let's get on to the second controversy. And this was pointed out immediately by the people uh, announcing it or whatever. I don't remember what it's called. Narrating it. (laughs) I was out in the sun all day. We drove past two billboards that said goats and cheese. There is a place that had both goats and cheese. My company refused to stop for it because we're in a hurry to get back. And I'm just off. Okay. I don't know if I wanted to eat the cheese and pet the goats, feed the the cheese to the goats, buy the goat, leave the cheese, pet the cheese and kidnap the goat. I don't know. I just wanted to be there. Okay. That's my shit. Now I'm home and I'm dehydrated as hell. And I got to figure out what the hell's going on with Javier Dominguez and uh who's the other person simon nielsen as far as i can tell this one didn't result in a disqualification which is weird because the announcers saw it and i think they're on like a five minute delay so when they say well it's too late for us to do anything about it it's like no jog down there and tell them no 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 it's on a delay well they can't just brush this one under the rug so i'd like to think that there was uh an investigation after this round because somebody ought to have told them I mean, even on a five-minute delay, you, you told them. I mean, people are, like, checking their tweets and stuff. Come on. I mean, l- let me just start out with one of the comments is, how are the judges not catching these mistakes? If the commentators are seeing them, then the judges are not. This is ridiculous. The endurance shuffle and one ring target won the games for him. I don't know what they mean by endurance shuffle. Is that a thing, or do they shuffle a card called endurance? But, uh... Yeah, that is pretty sad when the uh, commentators see it and the judges don't. I mean, the judges should be paying attention to the match. So if you want to watch the footage, it is on the official YouTube channel in the official VOD at 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 30 seconds. So Simon plays Sun Cleanser, and he chose target opponent loses all counters. Uh, That player can't get counters for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. Love that card. Almost as good as a Graveyard Jammer. So that clears his one energy and prevents him from gaining any energy. He's running energy. So just absolutely wrecked. He had a two Wrath of the Skies in hand, which is you get X energy, which now he can't do. Then you may may pay an amount of energy, which he can't do. Destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with mana value less than or equal to the amount of energy paid this way. He would have absolutely dominated the game with that. So where's the controversy? Well, Simon played the Sun Cleanser. I think I actually got that backwards over in the video, sorry. But Javier had just played the One Ring. One of the four things that the One Ring does is uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. Everything includes Sun Cleanser trying to target you. Now, it's only you, the player, and that doesn't come up very much. A lot of people think, oh, Sun Cleanser, a static ability. Okay, but they, they neglect that it has to target them. So... Like the announcer said, anybody could have missed this. It's kind of on, you know, him to say, no, I'm protected by this card that I have in my deck and know how it works. And that ain't a new card. That's been out for at least a year. So, like, come on. So the fact that they both missed it, uh, it only comes down to, was there any intention? I wouldn't risk losing an entire Sun Cleanser ability when you could just cast it the next turn, you know? Like, that card is gone. Now it's part of a board wipe on top of it because you screwed up. It it would just fail to target. It would, like, fizzle, but then it would still be there on the battlefield, which would be really bad. That would have lost in the game, so why gamble on it? Just wait a turn. It's just that simple. You already have the board state. So I, I just don't see an intention there, except that most Magic Pro players are cheaters. So, like, there's always that factor. So people are going to be, you know, in the back of their head. Oh, I don't know. He did this this one time. He thought he could get away with this one time. The worst thing is both players had a uh, the one ring in play. So in theory, they both should have known how it worked. I mean, it, it's something to overlook if you just kind of think of what the card does and not reread it. But... <sighs> Javier reads the card. He pulls Sun Cleanser and reads it. I mean, he's the one who missed it. He's not the one who perpetrated this potential uh, mix-up here, but uh, wow. And he was he was uh, two and one right now. Two wins, one loss. So this almost definitely cost him the game. That's a shame. I mean, anybody know Simon Nielsen's uh, history? I think I keep mixing up their names because the board state that I'm looking at is really confusing, but... Um, Simon played Sun Cleanser. Javier was the one who got nuked by it. Lost all of his energy, couldn't gain it, couldn't even run his deck. So yeah, really hard to track what's going on when the cards get this damn complex, but the board state wasn't really that complex. So, uh, I don't know. 
you could overlook it. You could not. I think there was no intention here, but there's always that shadow of doubt where you're like, I don't know. So that's your uh, fun, fun pro tour. Um, I wouldn't recommend participating in any form of uh, competitive magic because they purposely let cheaters back in because it makes people tune in to hate watch it and watch a villain go down. Or to watch them, you know, just be like, okay, I'm going to catch them this time. I'm pissed that this person's left playing the game, so I'm going to hate watch this entire tournament. Watch every move they make, and if they make one mistake, you know, they, they try to cheat, they try to stack the cards, I'm going to call them out because this person shouldn't be here. So, like, that's how they drive up views. Uh, a, a Wizards insider allegedly a couple years ago said that that's why, and then Mark Rosewater somewhat confirmed it by saying, yeah, magic needs a villain. It gets views. You're not supposed to say the quiet part out loud, dumbass. So hit subscribe if you want more coverage of these assholes all trying to cheat each other for money. It's kind of my thing on this channel because I hate the entire pro scene. They're stuck up rich boy assholes. They're all trying to angle shoot each other. And they all have unnatural win rates that cannot be explained by skill mixed with draw luck. Okay. Look at Fabrizio. And, and his winning record that people thought was a little suspicious right up until he got caught and that admitted that he, he's been stacking his deck for seven years. And the fact that some people reply to that anecdote with... Which person named Fabrizio that got suspended for cheating at a magic tournament are you specifically talking about? There were two. If that don't tell you everything you need to know about magic and, and the competitive scene, then you know what? Go to a pro tour. Go waste your time and money. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time.